May in 2021, and as chair the of the Rochester, fifth of, of May. Yeah, okay, tenth, tenth, sorry. As chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 01-20 and Act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. And in accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we're providing public access to this meeting through the Zoom platform, and you can get access to the Zoom meeting by looking at the contact information on the posted minutes through warnings through the town by going to the town website or by requesting a um, specific email sent to you by the town clerk. All right, thanks, Frank. How could I forget that? Ms. Yeah, well, Getting second <laughs> nature. Yeah. Yep. And um, and just to get everything up to um, to speed with Orca, and then here's someone else wanting to get in. Um, we have had a um, request for a couple additions to the agenda. Tim Pratt wants to speak about something, and Jeff Gephardt is um, wanting to um, comment on. We just got a notification from the Vermont Community of uh, Committee of Rural Development and um, about selecting Rochester for a project and also the Green Mountain Power proposal for um, Resiliency Island. And also um, on the Mo Electric project, the request for a portalet for that. And that led us off to the minutes for the April 26th meeting, which we have put off to approve till next meeting. Frank has had a, not a chance to see those and they're fairly extensive minutes. And that brings us right back around to um, Catherine Shankman as a guest and her neighbors who are concerned about the um, um, the neighbor trading mm -hmm. a, a bike path in uh, his yard. Joan. Yes, uh, it's it's Joan. Um, I'm sorry to. I hope this isn't obnoxious, but um, the bid opening was supposed to be the first item on the agenda at six ah. o'clock. Okay. okay. All right, that is so. All right, so Catherine, we'll um, we'll um, we've got you in there in support of the second item on the agenda. So let's go ahead and Joan and, and open those bids. You've got them. I um, believe that Julie sent you any last minute arrivals. Is that correct? Um, no, no, I, no, I, I didn't, got those no. bids. Actually, those? okay. She handed those to to Frank. Um, so I have all the results now. The question I have for you is, uh, we have six bids, and of those, all but one have bid for all five sites. So would you like me just to give the totals for each bid, or um, would you like me to break down each one of the five project areas? Um. So all but one are in the one that is not for all six sites. How many um, sites? Four out of the five. That's for four out of the five. Right. Um, well, I suppose since they're bidding now and the, the people that bid on all six sites, are they willing five. to accept, or all five, are they willing to accept less than all of those sites? Uh, I can't answer that. Yeah, we'd have to say. All, all right. we're doing at this point is <coughs> reading the results. All right. I think you should probably give that you'll be meeting knowledge. separately to make a decision. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <coughs> yeah, so all I right. think so, we should probably have all the information then. Yeah. All right. I'll try and make it as untedious as possible okay. for the rest of you. Um, I'll start with K and S construction. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, KNS bid on all five roads and uh, Jerusalem Hill Road, $31,280. Mount Road, 42016 West uh, Young Road, $4,512. Wing Farm Road, $37,440. Maple Hill Road, $20,208. And there was a note appended to the bid in which the bidder stated that if all four, five of these projects, all five roads 
were awarded to KNS that they would provide a 5% discount. Um, so that the total before the discount for those five sites are 135,456. If you take out the discount, the net uh, bid amount would be 128.83. The next one is Blue Mountain Trucking, uh, who also bid on all five roads. Jerusalem Hill Road, 34,474. Mount Cushman Road, 49,412. West Young Road, 6,000. Wing Farm Road, 42,069. And Maple Hill Road, 21,668. The total, 153,623. Uh, next is Excavate, who also bid on all five roads. Jerusalem Hill, 24,828.50. Mount Cushman Road, $33,850.20. West Young Road, $3,581.40. Wing Farm Road, 29,718 even. Maple Hill Road, 16,040.10. So the total for Excavate is 108,000. 01820. Three more. Here. Next is Harvey's um, plumbing and excavating. Now, Harvey's only bid on four out of the five roads. Um, so I, I won't give you a total because it won't be comparable here. Um, Jerusalem Road, 37,291. And this includes uh, time for a hydraulic hammer. Uh, no bid for Mount Cushman Road. West 5,867 even. Wing Farm Road, 24,823 even. And Maple Hill Road, uh, 22,007 even. Uh, next one is Jack Bowen excavating, who bid on all five roads. Jerusalem Hill, 22,541.45. Mount Cushman Road, 27,836.57. West Young Road, $3,026.45. Wing Farm Road, 24,388.34. And Maple Hill Road, $13,845.98. And their total uh, was $91,638.79. And lastly, uh, ECS, who bid on all five roads. <clears throat> Jerusalem Road, 19,032.96. Mount Cushman Road, 22,185.52. West Young Road, 2,658.28. Wing Farm Road, 17,638, no cents. And Maple Hill, $10,929 even. Uh, the total for ECS for all five roads was $72,443.76. Excuse me, you said $72,400. What was that? For which? The ECS. very last one, ECS, $72,400. The total you're looking for? Yes, total. $72,443.76. So, 76. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so select board, I'll compile all this and send this to you so you don't have to. Hopefully you were not writing all of that, trying to write all that down. So those are the six bids we have. And uh, you can just let me and Cooter know when you plan to set up a special select board meeting in order to discuss this and uh, make your decision. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, while we're um, here, Joan, do you have any other updates besides working on that? Sure. Uh, you've heard before, but I've been going, having a back and forth with VTrans on the total um, reimbursement, the final reimbursement that they owe us for Bethel Mountain Road uh, two years later. Uh, they were trying to well, they were had come up with a number that was short about twelve thousand nine hundred dollars. 
So I questioned him on that. So we've been going back and forth all week about it. And it turns out that uh, it seems it's not yet resolved. I think it might be resolved by tomorrow, but it appears that they may have made an error and thought that they had paid us for something that they hadn't. So we're almost done with that. All right. Um, and we have resolution now on the challenges that we got from FEMA reviewers for the roads that have been completed so far, the, the work that had been completed in 2019. Um, they were asking, if you remember, whether we were required to obtain any um, permits from either Army Corps of Engineers or from wetlands, uh, DEC wetlands or DEC streams. And thanks to a lot of help from Chris Bump at VTrans, uh, we were able to connect with the folks, relevant folks who could uh, look at these sites for us and let us know whether we actually did need permits. And after a great deal of work uh, on my part and on Cooter's part, the answer is no, you didn't need any permit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so I think we're done with that, but I'm not going to say we're done with that because no, we're not that. done with it. Totally. <laughs> we're done. We hope we yeah. <laughs> okay. And so the next task that Cooter and I will be working on is the municipal roads general permit. Is we in a, within a few months we have to make a report on our progress towards addressing all of the hydrologic leak sections of road sections of road that are uh, considered not up to 100% functioning. So I have to work with Cooter to figure out which what projects have been done to date whether we're meeting our interim goals uh, towards the final goal of having all of those road sections uh, right. improved to state standards. That's it. Thank you, Joan. All right. Um, so, Catherine, I'll work back down to you. We got a good um, preview to start before um, Frank alerted me to the lack of procedure here. Um, Tony Goopy, have you got anything to report from the library? Uh, we will have a trustees meeting tomorrow at six o'clock. And I think you have some things on the agenda from the library. Um, yep, we have an application for the use of the park. Right, yeah, but I think, so I don't really have anything else except uh, uh, Jeanette is starting to get people into the library by appointment. Okay. So that's a nice change. Yep. Um, while we have you on there, do you want to tell us what the application for the library use of the park is? Jeanette can probably speak to that a lot better, but I think right. it's the matter. It's Jeanette, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, a month ago, you approved the use of the gazebo on Friday afternoons. That will be for older children. Um, as a summer reading event. And we would also like to use the gazebo on Thursday afternoons for the younger preschool uh, group. So it's basically the same thing as Friday, just on Thursday afternoon as well. Okay, and that's um, through the- um, What's the time frame on that? Uh, nope. Tuesday afternoon. Um, I think I put on the, the application one to four. We'll probably be using it more along the line of two to three, but just to put a cushion on each end. And that's Thursday afternoon. Correct. So when you say by younger children, do you mean like preschoolers or do you just yes. mean early elementary or excuse me? Preschool. The um, zero to five on Thursday and the you know six to ten on Friday. Uh, ages six to 10, okay, on Friday, okay. Okay, with two restrictions, we probably should also alert the lawn mowing person that that wouldn't be a good thing to mow their park. I think because we give the library the Friday one, I don't know why they don't go down to the school for the Thursday one. Make it a lot easier. They've got those tents set up down there now. And if they're younger kids, they might want to play around on the playground a little bit. Uh, it might be a better fit for them well i'm not sure how people from the community coming into school property would fit with the rules and regulations at the school well why don't you check on that and get back to us 
Okay, well, these well, are set. The summer reading program is start, <coughs> set to start the first week of June. So am I correct? Am I correct that you, we already, I mean, the select board already approved the Friday one, didn't they at a previous meeting? Yes, yes we did. During yes, the you. farmer's market. Yeah, yeah, during the farmer's market. I don't see why this should be a problem at all. It's a, it's a bunch of kids being on the park. The park well, I don't, I don't see it as a problem, Tony. I just don't want to keep tying up the park every day for something else when, you know, people are driving through or whatever. And uh, I just don't think we need to tie it up every day of the week. That's all. I don't think it's been very tied up at all. It's pretty empty most of the time that people go down. I, I just don't even see that this makes sense. It's not like there's going to be a crowd of four or 500 kids there. That's true. Yeah. So, so um, now you're asking for this for throughout what kind of time frame? All summer? What if we approve this for, um, for a month and then see how it plays out and then we could revisit that? Well, partially because we're trying to put together a calendar for the summer to send home with the kids before school's out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pat, I mean, we're going to hope to have maybe 10 kids. I don't, I don't, um, I didn't know, Frank, if I see it as that much of a, of a problem. I mean, if it's uh, the mowers, if, you know, when they get in there, they're, they're pretty quick about it. Um, I, well, it's I would, up to you guys. I, I, would, I just I'd be inclined to um I'm just being cautious. It. That's all. I'd be inclined to improve it and then if it turns in to be a uh, um problematic, then we could we could um revisit things you know into the summer. It's fine with me. That's what you want to do. What do you think, Matt? What happens on a rainy day? Uh, they go back inside the library or uh, they're they... on, in the gazebo. That's the point of being on the gazebo. They got okay. a yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you that would be any, fine unless there was really bad weather. Do you have any idea how many kids you're anticipating? I have no idea. We've unfortunately had very little participation um, in children's programs in the recent past. We're hoping to build a children's program with these programs this summer. June? Yeah, Nancy? How, um, or maybe I should ask Frank, how is this going to impact the painting of the bandstand? Well, I'm not sure of that, Nancy. I haven't, um, I did hear from uh, Magic Brush today uh, in not a favorable way. So I wasn't really, I have to uh, look at another option for that now. So I'll have to get back to everyone on that. Yeah. I'm not sure how it is gonna affect the painting of the bandstand. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I find out. Yep. So let me ask one other question. Are these the same children that will potentially participate in the uh, Rockbridge camp? These are preschoolers. I don't know what the minimum age for going to camp is at Stockbridge. What about the older kids? I have no idea. The Rockbridge camp is for Stockbridge and Rochester kids. Right. And I think, I think they have activities in both towns. It starts at six, it starts older. It does not include preschool. And it, if I understand correctly, you said the the ages six to ten is is Friday, and the Thursday afternoons are uh, the preschoolers, right? Correct. For your library thing, okay. Correct, because you can't have that. Well, I mean, just two groups is a pretty wide age span. Um, so we're just trying to do the younger kids on on one day and the older kids on another day yeah well i'd i'd be inclined to to give permission for that and see see how it goes and if it you know if it ends up to being a conflict then we can address that in the future i have a little bit of a, a wonder about um insurance but um uh... I, I think it's probably all under the same umbrella because it's the library. Right. So whatever insurance covers anything that happens on the park. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess I'd, I'd move to approve that application. Do I have a second? 
can second that. And second that, and then all in favor? There's two of us. Aye. Yeah. You yep. guys can. I'm I'm against. Okay. No all problem. Right. A, a rare split vote in town here. Yep. Rare Back split. Town and, all right. Sorry, folks. Nope. <laughs> all right. Um. So oh. we got um. So. Catherine, thank you for your patience. Why don't we um, come back to this topic now um, that we got some of this other agendas out of the way there. Peter, I know that Peter, I knew that Peter has something to say, yeah. so I'm going to yeah. step aside and let Peter talk. And what was Peter's last and, name? So that I, Jensen. I need to go. Jensen. You too. I have this your important line. input. Jensen. Yeah. Jensen. Jensen. Judy Jensen's Jensen. brother. Oh, Jensen. Jensen. Thank you. I believe somebody is trying to insert a point here. Yeah, I have an important point on this conversation. If I can cut in the line. Um, Peter was about to talk, but Peter, are you willing to let Kim? Well, he says it's important. Let's hear what he has All to right, say. So yeah. Hi, uh, y'all. I've been around a few of these meetings and most, and I've been in uh, uh, touch with Mahar a little bit. I guess he's not on our meeting tonight. Don't see him. But, um, I feel comfortable speaking on his behalf and also on behalf of Rasta um, uh, being a longtime member. Most important point is the path, the small woodland path on Mahar Sperling's property has no intention of going public. Rasta does not need or want any uh, responsibility for a very, very short path on private property. And um, there are no other public concerns or public intentions. Mahar in youthful exuberance was uh, excited to make a contribution to our town in that fashion, but he has come to realize that there's no reason, need, or responsibility for putting this in any sort of public purview. So with this being a private path on private property, I'd suggest there's not a lot of conversation necessary at the select board level but neighbors talking to neighbors may be a way to uh, find resolution to everybody. That's all I got. Well, that's some important information there. Uh, and it's new information because I've had extensive correspondence with Mahar. So I'm glad that he informed you and you've informed us. Uh, Could we have this in writing? Would it be possible to have Mahar's intent in writing here? Sure, I imagine he'd be happy to email uh, his intentions to Catherine. Would that be sufficient or who else should receive that? I, I would find that sufficient. All right, I'll, uh, I'll uh, and encourage him to do so. Yeah, but I, I have additional concerns about the path because my property is the closest to it, 91 School Street being one of those properties. And I'm right across the creek from the low point on the path. And one of my concerns has to do with erosion. There have been a lot of trees cut to make us, as you put it, a small path. And that's going to expose a very steep slope to much more direct rainfall. Mm -hmm. And that is a sensitive point in that stream because that's right where the work is going to be done this summer to repair the wall of the uh, stream bed, which is collapsing dangerously there. And that's, I guess, 50 feet or so from the uh, bike path. So it's a point of contention right there, whether that's a good thing. And as to it being a short path, I saw a biker just the other day come down the path and continue on the creek line um, toward the White River. Um, till I couldn't see him anymore, which was beyond the property, the private property of uh, Sperling. So I don't know whether that's leading into other ideas for uh, extending the trail or what. And as to it being inconsequential because it's a meeting between private people or an issue for private people, it's affected my plans for that property because it was the view of the stream and the quiet and the fact that the trees provided a nice forest, their view. 
that made us want to uh, build something there and replace the property that presently exists and is falling down there. So that changes our plans completely, and now the uh, we're going to have to see how it plays out. I agree with you, by the way, this is a matter as neighbors, we should be neighborly and speak to each other about this. And that's what I look forward to. I'm sure Mahar would like to have that conversation and we'll circle in Tim Pratt and Catherine Shankman and any other concerned neighbors will be, I'll encourage him to make that communication. That, that would be excellent. By the way, Thank that you. was always the intent to, to, to work this out between neighbors, but when it wasn't it was not, the concerns of the neighbors were not being adequately addressed. We went to the planning commission and that's, you know, so I'm very glad to hear uh, that the intention has shifted. It was the public usage that was of the greatest yeah. concern. Yeah. I think it's been a, a little um, educational experience for Mahar just to, um, you know, learn about um, reining in his, his, as Kinley put it, his youthful exuberance, you know, that's, um, you know, he's very excited about the whole um, recreational trail development in the area. And he just wanted to, um, you know, throw his, his, his ring in the fire there. But um, is, is that land even in, is Mahar's land even in the village zone? Yes. I would it, think it it's is. not, is it? Yes, it is. It is? Because yeah. I, I thought the zone was the brook. I'm a little confused as to exactly where his property is and compared to some to like cat where Catherine lives. You or... remember the the old conceptions building? Uh huh. Okay, it's the it's between that it's that piece of property. Oh, okay. All it's right. Now okay. the apartment building owned by the Sperlings. All right. Thank you. Now I know where it is. Well, the, yeah. the property um, is the property there, it, directly across from our property is owned by. Jeff Friedman and Janice Melvin, and then the the Sperling property has a slit right by the cottage, right, so that the path came across the backside of the um, apartment building, and then it took the downward uh, turn it right into the front of the cottage that is owned by my next door neighbors, the Brick Schoolhouse folks. So, yeah, and then I I think that's all Sperling, uh, and I don't know what the boundaries of the other end of their property is so at the um at the um peter you mentioned riding a, along the brook then it it loops right back up onto the driveway going up to that apartment building that's correct yeah but the uh, the path that i saw the cyclist on a few days ago was a little more extensive he came down the the path that's been cut and then headed off toward the white river along the brook um, right. Uh, then, on a part that wasn't path, made into yeah. a path at all. All right. Well, it's, um, I think it's, there's not much that as a select board we're um, going to do other than facilitate conversation between neighbors. I guess just be thankful that he, they did decide to cut all the trees down and, and put gravel on the bank, which I've seen some places <laughs> do. I mean, it, um, but Ouch. not to make really have any jurisdiction concern. over this anyway, do we do? It's, no, we, I don't think we do. I don't think, but but no, it's, I, don't, I don't think we do. You know, um, but it's it's um, glad to serve as a sounding board just for people to get out and and, and speak their minds and and you know what their concerns are. Um, yep. If anything, it's helped us to uh, establish more um, communication. Kinley, thank you for speaking with Mahar about that. And I believe when the um, you approach the planning board it, um, and, and Greg White is the, now the executive director of what used to be known as Rasta. And he, um, that was news to him. This is, I think Mahar's exuberance of saying, this is gonna be another Rasta trail was, um, was that was, you know, not based in reality. So, yep. Yep. experience is good yep we all learn from it yep so um yep. thank you so june did I, I i'm sorry i was writing as fast as i could you you were thanking kinley for for checking uh consulting with the planning commission about this was that no it? i was thanking me for his um 
communication with Mahar um, about these concerns and, and the clarification he brought to the, the topic tonight. Thank you very much. Sorry about this. It's all right. Okay, we got Jones, we got the library. Um, so um, I think that uh, in terms of the highway issue, opening those bids and the updates on finally getting some reimbursement on the FEMA projects kind of covers that. Um, Jeff, you as the energy coordinator, I think that will um, come into um, some of the topics that you added to the agenda at the building. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? You're, you're muted, Jeff. Try to do that at least once a day. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So um, a couple of things. Uh, we've uh, been uh, selected as the uh, Vermont uh, Council on Rural Development's uh, choice for their model um, climate communities uh, program. It uh, should give us really an opportunity to um, restart Envision uh, Rochester um, and to give us additional assistance in looking at the high school repurposing and including all of that, um, planning to analyze and address our buildings and, and our town assets and our community, you know, in our residential assets as well. Uh, to set us on a path to get ready for the future. Um, as we see increases in, in climate uh, problems, uh, you know, bigger storms, you know, this is a way that we can further work to enhance our resiliency and, and, and be a, a vital community. Um, so I, uh, I'm really thrilled that, uh, that they're selecting us for this. I've been working with John Copens uh, um, off and on uh, and participating in their climate catalyst training. Um, and uh, I, I just think it's a great, a great uh, tool for us. It's going to cost us nothing. They're not bringing money, but they're bringing excellent uh, facilitators and analyzers of, of community uh, vitality. So uh, I look forward to working with the select board and, and uh, with Vic and with Catherine and, and the repurposing committee um, to uh, see what we can build here. Yeah. Likewise with GMP and the Resiliency Island, um, we are uh, coming up uh, on, I think it's the 18th that they are coming to Rochester. Uh, I've completed the, uh, with the help of uh, a lot of people, um, Vic should get a call out and Frank helping me with some wordsmithing um, and others. Uh, but we uh, have, I think, a final document uh, ready to provide uh, GMP as our community profile. Um, it gives them information that they need to determine whether the resiliency island, whether we can go ahead with that kind of thing. So, so excuse me, Jeff, uh, they're coming on May 18th for a meeting about the Resiliency Island program. Is that it? Um, they're coming to take a look at siting, potential siting okay. for the equipment involved. Um, uh, the idea with the Resiliency Island is that you generate renewable power, um, primarily uh, it's likely to be solar, um, that you uh, put a lot of that power in a commercial Tesla battery bank. And when power to our community is down because of wires down out in the woods coming to us, um, the Resiliency Island will be able to continue to function. We will have uh, utilities and service in, in the community and can provide better support to outlying areas that are out of power. Um, in addition, it provides GMP with a lot of financial benefits, less repair costs, and also the ability to tap those batteries when they go into peak periods. And that prevents them from having to buy very expensive power and uh, makes this appealing to Green Mountain Power. Um, so the report, the, the community profile is something that they are waiting for um, if it uh, meets the approval of the board and we should get it off to them so they've got some time to review it uh, before the meeting coming up. 
Hey, Jeff. And, yeah. There's just one thing on that questionnaire that they put out. I, I would like to add something on that number one to not just make me the contact there, but I would like the select board to have all that information too as a whole, not just me. Um, if you could add the, you know, the select board members there in that question number one. Sure. No that problem. would be good, I think. I think no problem. I think that'd be best for everyone. Would it work best to have one name and then copies? Or do you want to? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah that's I think fine what they're too. trying to do is who should we be reaching out to? Right. Yeah, that's fine. Do that yeah. and we'll, we can Just copy totally. it that way. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'd be good. Yeah. I, the more people we have knowing about this, the better off we're going to be. Absolutely. And this this will dovetail in. I mean, an analysis of this will dovetail in nicely with the uh, the model. Um, I, I can't remember their darn acronym and title, but the, the climate right. economy model community. That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's part and parcel of it, really. Uh, so um, on the twenty seventh of this month, we have a Mo Electric uh, demonstration day scheduled. Uh, this is work of the uh, Rochester uh, Energy and Climate Action um, Committee. Uh, there are three vendors that uh, are going to be participating. Uh, what they will be showing are commercial grade um, mowing equipment. The uh, invitees to the event are the folks around town uh, in the valley who uh, mow lawns for a living. Um, and uh, also reaching out to Sunshine Berry Farm. They do a lot of mowing as well as the golf course. And of course, to interest the vendors, the broader the view, the better. Um, I've reached out to a couple of the, the, the golf courses down in Killington as well. We may have some interaction or, or uh, people coming from the Bethel side of the mountain as their energy committee is interested in this as well. A gentleman by the name of Steve Wisbaum is uh, really the most knowledgeable person in the state about this equipment. He will be there at the event helping contractors identify the specifications that would be important for these machines to fit their needs. Um, Green Mountain Power is coming. Uh, they have a $2,500 incentive for this kind of equipment. Um, and uh, in fact, Green Mountain Power has never seen this equipment, so they're bringing people from both Southern Vermont and Northern Vermont, as well as uh, Freeman Quarry in Central Vermont, so that they can actually see what they're throw throwing $2,500 at. And Jeff, uh, where is this actually taking place? Where in this will be at the ball field. Okay. Oh, you and, mean down by the tennis courts? Yep. Okay, okay thank you. Excuse me. Uh, thus the need, I think, for a portalette. Um, it will run from 11 o'clock until uh, 2 o'clock, and it's, it's not a formal program. Um, basically, people will come through, you know, pop-up tent stations, they'll register. I want them all to, uh, to uh, talk with Stephen Wisbaum, and then they will go uh, ride and talk about the equipment uh, with the vendors and uh, all that in a bag of chips. I'm going to buy some hot dogs and some chips and we'll have a little cookout down there. So um, do you need to coordinate with um, John Gordon who usually mows that field to, to hold I on? Saw John and spoke, I saw John and spoke with him on um, Friday. He is aware of it. He's also invited to the event, of course. Yeah. Um, and what I would suggest or request would be that uh, maybe Frank and, and John and I go to the site and take a look at uh, what kind of area we should stay within or without. Um, but it would be nice to have a good deal of, of uh, space there to, because there, there are 21 different firms that are on the list right now. I'm not saying they're all going to come, but. Uh, um, I thought you said the, three vendors were coming. Three like, vendors, yeah. And we have 25, 21 people right now on the invitation list. Okay. This is not, you know, we're not talking about residential mowers. We're talking okay. about commercial yeah. grade stuff. Well, there will okay. also be electrified um, hand tools there, chainsaws, blowers, uh, those kinds of weed whackers, those kinds of things. It would be nice if at the end of it all, the, the field was mowed. Could well be. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That it's safe. Yeah, I mean, there's certain concerns. I yeah. think we want to keep them off of the, the, uh, 
the infield, for instance. Um, you know, but I think again, if we, if uh, John and Frank and I got down there, we can find the, the yeah. right spot. Yeah, I, I don't want to be running onto somebody else's land and have a problem or yeah. anything like that. So um, this is the fun thing where uh, the attendees would actually be able to sit on these mowers and take them for a spin. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm hoping we can get a gas one there and have a drag race. <laughs> you said this is May 27th too, right? That's a Thursday? Uh, May 27th from yeah, 11 to 11, 2 o'clock. 11 to 2, okay. Yeah, the, the machinery costs quite a bit up front, but then almost nothing after that. I mean, the cost for the electricity in comparison to gasoline and the lack of repair issues other than cleaning grass out of the, the mower deck and, and sharpening the blades, um, it appears to me that this is now the most economical way for a business to operate. So Jeff, I don't know anything about this particular thing like charging. Do you charge it in the way you would charge an electric car or how do you, yeah. how do you, so yeah. are there places in town? Like someone told me there's a charging place at the skip mart. I don't know if there is or not. I don't know of any charging place in the skip mart. I have a charger okay. in my garage. Okay. So a contractor would likely okay. charge right. their, Have their own charge at home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the final thing, um, just as a point of information, the Energy Committee has uh, been working um, with Jeanette, and we will be having the first of our lecture series. What day is that? This one will be on heat pumps and uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, thank you, Jeanette, on the 19th, seven o'clock to eight o'clock. Okay, so, and that's in person or is that a Zoom? Uh, that will be a Zoom. Okay, so May 19th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And so to get in touch with that, call the library or something to, to get the link or whatever? Yes. Yes. Martha, you have a press release for that. Okay, so it's a lecture, but the lecture series on this, because I don't have it in front of me, I'm sorry. The topic uh, of the lecture pumps. series on heat uh, pumps. Okay, thank uh, you yeah. very much, sorry. Yeah, and our hope is to run these through October. I don't think anybody's gonna be interested in November, or December, but once a month. Great, and um, you also had a request for a porta potty um, for that event. Yeah, I was wondering if the one by the fire station, which is currently not in use, could be moved to the uh, is that one the, by not, the tennis court. Not not movable. That one. It's the oh. enclosure built around. In fact, they didn't even um, pull it out over the winter just because of the uh, the enclosure and the and the size of it. Um, yeah, it, could it's it be usable lot. in its location? Um, it's a long way to go from. Uh, Julie, did you have a, were you going to say something about that? Um, I was, I just wanted to say that um, I had a porta potty dropped off for um, Little League, the Little League, and they um, had asked about the other. So I said I'd need to ask about the park and the, you know, the other locations that we put them out. So Ten. the one that for the Little League is, is probably it's closer than the fire station. Give or take, probably split. Do you have one there for the tennis courts in the summer? Do yes. Well, maybe we could move that up to May yeah, twenty seventh. No. That would certainly be closer than the Little League field. Yeah, yeah. So last year we held off on that because of COVID. Is that correct? Yeah. So, I've I've read the um, the state's um, criteria and actually wrote to the state and explained what we were doing um, and got back their reply, which, you know, it, we need to basically stay socially distanced uh, and be wearing masks if we cannot be. Uh, they did not really address the, the porta potty aspect of it. I, I could resurrect that and share that with the, the board if that would be helpful. I don't remember it all off the top. The one next to the new Riverbrook Park is still locked from when COVID first uh, right. shutdown happened. So mm -hmm. I noticed there are a lot of picnickers, picnickers going there now. And um, I'm wondering 
if that could be unlocked and maintained. It's maintained by the company. Right, right. So but they be responsible for it. But I locked it with a CVPS lock. So I know <laughs> I, I'm probably the only one that's got a key. <laughs> so maybe Greg still has one, but I know I got one. So okay, I can well, unlock it anytime. I'm just waiting for someone to say it's okay. Well, I'm sure I don't know what the situation. what the policy is on COVID and, and port of portal at site. You know, I don't know if anybody does yet. Well, but I can unlock it at any time. So we've we've got one now installed by the little league fields, right? Yeah. So I think we're kind of um stepping we're good then, direction. huh? Yeah. I think we're so, so I'll, I can unlock it any time. Uh we'll have to set up them to come and yeah and go through it yep and then oh. i guess at the same time we should um we're saying we should um bring the one in for the tennis courts this summer that would make yeah. it a lot easier on yeah. particularly the mo electric event yeah for sure all right i mean at my age i don't think i could hang around there three hours without yeah <laughs> yeah all right um great Thank you, Jeff. That's it. For all your effort. <coughs> all right. Um, so we've got um, in the old business, we've got the driveway application from Aggie. Thank you for waiting through all this for us to get to. It. So I um, um, spent some time uh, with Cooter and Terry Severy, and we um, there is a, a plan for the driveway on the north end of the building and it's uh, as long as we um you can follow the the um no more than a five percent grade in the um, first 20 feet of that driveway which will require a fairly good amount of material to be moved the um the water shutoffs that we were concerned about terry uh, marked those and those are not going to be a conflict they're they're farther downhill from that so I think if we can um, keep to the um, to the grade requirements, I'd move to approve that. Thank you. So um, where, I'm sorry, excuse me, where is that located? What road is that on? Or? It's on Robinson Avenue. What's the address, Augie? 37 Robinson Drive. 37 Robinson Drive. Yep. Thank you, sorry. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. And we have a second driveway application for Frank Landry, which is basically near the intersection of Oak Lodge Road and Fisk Road. And we had some back and forth and some compromises. Um, and um, Cooter assured me today that they've settled upon a, um, a good solution to where that driveway will, will enter the property. So I'd move to approve that application also. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, cool. That took a little while to get to that, but they figured it out. Um, Tim, Tim Pratt, you had you were on the uh, agenda that you had something you wanted to speak about. You... Yeah, yeah, I did. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, in the last couple of months, I've had people come up and ask me about uh, doing a co-ed softball get together down in the ball field. And, you know, it's been in my mind now for a while. And then I talked to somebody this morning that said, you know, they'd help and uh, do the logistics and uh, make sure that the insurance and stuff was organized. So I said then that, oh, and by the way, this was all by landline communication. so. This is old school stuff, but <laughs> so um, I said, you know, if I can get Herb Downs on board with this, I'll approach the uh, select board tonight about it. So I, I got a hold of Herb within an hour. He responded, called me back, and uh, you know, this is stuff that we used to do years ago, and I did it right up until 2014 with Babe Ruth, and the town insurance covered us and we were playing right here in Rochester with Rutland and Millbury and Fairhaven. So um, 
getting together a co-ed softball game wouldn't be that difficult. And I went down to the ball field today and that ball field is really in pretty good shape for not being maintained as a ball field for last eight years. So um, I was just calling to see how you guys felt about uh, as soon as even like July 4th and or 5th, the 4th is a Sunday and the 5th is a Monday, uh, having the people that wanted to do a softball tournament just show up and, uh, you know, we would divide them. Uh, you know, the co-ed is half have to be men, half have to be women and, uh, you know, go from there, see what happens. And uh, the, the ball field closest to the river would be the one that would be ready to go with very little work and, you know, I'll hang a flag on the flagpole. So I um, just wanted Tim, to find it. Tim, I have a question. Are you talking about um, students or adults for this? For the it would class? have to, you know, it would have to be 18 and above unless oh, okay. a 17 year old was there and the parent said they could play. You know, that ball field is insured. Um, kids play on it all the time. And I'll tell you what, 16, 17 year old student uh, can be as good at playing as any 40 year old adult. <laughs> so uh, it, it's not like softball is not as physical, I hate to say it because I played it for years, as baseball or soccer, or, you know, it, it's more mellow and, uh, you know, having Harv on board uh, would, would help, especially if we got 30 people that want to play, we could do a round robin and he's good about that kind of stuff. And he said he's all on board. So, um, and, you know, the first person I talked to this morning, I'm not sure if they want to be uh, officially involved right now, but they certainly will be at, at, in the beginning. I mean, if you guys approve it. I just have one quick comment to make that the ball field closest to the river at, has bandstands and there are a lot of dead trees that are precarious right by the bandstand. Um, there's been a lot of beaver activity in the last year or so. And there's a, a lot of dead branches and dead trees, which could become a problem at some point. Uh, they're going to fall at some point. And I don't know if the town wants to deal with that or not, but that might be an issue for having crowds well, of people sitting under dead trees that it, are about to fall. <laughs> well, I was down there today and those trees that are toppled over won't take much to get on the ground right. and the the branches aren't uh overhanging the ball field but i mean there's a few that are overhanging the ball field but they they are not in the way for you know a social community softball game uh, you're, you know they're the the rules will be pretty simple and basic and you know it won't be asa certified or any of that and it'll be volunteer umpires it's the same thing that we have done in the past and we did it for years and then you know the the it just dropped off yep. and so now i'm here oh, yeah i'm Go sorry ahead. um you're you're talking about maybe the fourth and fifth of july but are, you're also talking other dates this summer right if you well it depends it depends how many people are interested. Okay. You know, Harv asked the same question. And, you know, let's see who shows up on, uh, you, you know, the fourth, the band is lifted and the ball field's ready to go. There is no neighbor quabbling about uh, privacy or anything. This is very basic stuff. And, uh, you know, I feel very comfortable having it done. I, and people I'm can social, the, the bench, the benches are down there. The dugouts are cleaned out. I got to tell you, those dugouts are clean. And whoever's been doing that has been doing a very good job keeping those dugouts clean. 
because even when we were using them every day, they weren't that clean. So, uh, and there's, you know, there's no issue with the dugouts. There's no issue with the field because we rebuilt that field exactly how it was b before Irene. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only I, thing that's missing are the bags. I think it's, um, it sounds good to me. And in Burma, that's a good point, but it won't take much to, to um, clear out those few dead branches, but it's definitely worth attending to before you have people sit on the, on the um, benches there. Yeah. Tim, if you get this all settled, you know, I mean, it sounds like the, the select board is probably going to approve. If you get this all settled and everything, um, and um, would you please get uh, let me know just the, the the particulars so that I could put a separate article in the paper about it to let people know? I think you know, or maybe in the sports section. Or yeah, if, if, if the select board agrees to this tonight, uh, the first person that talked to me will uh, get all that information out on Front Porch Forum. Get, I mean, they're in touch with you all the time anyway. I just don't want to name that person until uh, the select okay. board decides what they want to do. But I, I don't necessarily see Front Porch Forum every day. You know, if they could contact my the email at the Herald, that would be helpful. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, thank you very much. So, you know. so what do you what do you guys think, Pat and Frank? I I support it a hundred percent. I think it would be a lovely way to not only bring a community back together because since our high school closed, we just don't have any enough social events. This is an outdoor event. Um and it, it could lead to another bonding of our valley which is important um, to to get together with people from Granville, Hancock, Stockbridge, and Pittsfield. Yeah. Um, it would be, we've been mowing that field um, and and let's use it. Um, it is worth a try. If it, if it doesn't happen, it, it's nothing ventured, nothing gained or lost, but um, if it, it would be great to try and it would be just a great thing to bring our community back together. I was at the Little League game last week and it was just so fantastic to see all the parents on the sideline. And some of those parents would certainly be some of our players. Um, so um, I, I just think it's, it, it would be wonderful for the community and the Valley. I'm good. I'm good with it. We can speak with John, I think, about the trees he's doing the mowing down there so yeah well here's the thing that we did a few years ago back when danny was selectman and uh we he and the board switched weed whacking and trimming for an extra mowing a week because the weed whacking and trimming is especially with this new machine mowing machine takes longer than mowing the grass and it doesn't need to be weed whacked every time. So, you know, that was one thing that we did when we were playing uh, three or four games a week. And I'll tell you, when people came over from Rutland and Fairhaven, our field is one of the nicest fields that we played on. So when I went down and looked at the farther end today and all that's growing in that infield are dandelions i was very surprised and i was also surprised at how little work was there was on uh, the riverbank so the thing is the people that don't know me if we're going to do it we're not going to kick the can down the road it'll be done you know if you guys uh, support it uh will decide if it's the fourth or fifth and you know give people plenty of notice and just do it no, so no, uh, no, you know, I, I, I move to approve this idea yeah i can second that yeah and all in favor all right. right all right um we'll just talk with john about the trees down there yeah yeah and uh we'll go from there okay beautiful thanks a lot thank you tim I'm happy to see the the field used again. I spent a lot of years there yeah. when my son was playing for high school. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's no reason why with the people in this community right now, ages 17 to 60, 
that there won't be 25 people down there to <laughs> have a game. And the other thing is, if if we get more interest than that, we'll work out a round robin so three teams can play. And if there's 45 or 50 people that want to do it, we'll just make another field at the baseball yeah. uh, diamond. You know, you just move the bases in. It's not a big deal to do it. No. So, um, yes. Nancy, you had something you wanted to contribute? Well, I just wanted to ask the question of Tim. You mentioned mowing twice a week. And well, whatever, whatever, whatever the contract was, well, we I'm added we added an extra day to it and didn't do a trimming. And that was back when um, it, well, I can't remember who was mowing, uh, but they agreed to it. Well, until recently the last couple of years it had been mowed twice a week and then we decided nobody was using it. it yeah, was. <laughs> three times a week. It depends on, you know, as long as it's mowed on the fourth or fifth, you know, whatever date that comes Well, there's a big week. mowing party on the 27th right before it, so. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe we can get Jeff to come down there and mow it with the electric uh, machine. Well, you know, people are standing around watching. Yeah. And you know, I'll be there Mahar cooking hot dogs. Yeah. Let's get Mahar down. There, there you go. You could cook hot dogs for the game too. Mahar can do his demonstration on his mountain bike and you know, yeah. settle that whole business. It's a good All idea. Right. All right. Well, it's um kind of um kind of an exciting um glimmer of um coming oh. out the other end of the whole COVID thing. So Norman, uh, that's you. why that's why I I when I was talking to the person this morning, I said let's not wait until next year. I said let's yeah, get yeah. it done this year and let's get it done on the fourth or fifth because there's no parade. Yeah, and there's right. I mean there's plenty of room down there. People couldn't spread out a hundred feet apart and still be all right. So Pat, you had something you want to say? Dave just volunteered the roller, so if the if the field needs to be rolled to get it good and hard, he, he'll do that for free. Great, and that's important. That that helps a lot. And uh, Bruce, you have something you'd like to say? Yeah, I was just going to say, hey Tim, if you did it on the fourth, they can come up to Pierce Hall and on the park and get the chicken barbecue that we're holding. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right there you there. go. That'll give them energy to play baseball if they're softball. Feed your chicken. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah. So Bruce, let's get together and find out what time your barbecue is, and I know how long softball games take. So you know, we could have Martha put a little blurb in there about. Yeah, I want. Barbecue. I want to put stuff in about that. I. I'm. Um, you know, I think that would be great. And um, that reminds me, Bruce, did I hear Becky Donay tell me that you might have that race in the morning or something? Or is that not happening on 4th of July? The race is going to happen, but I have nothing to do but with it. But it's on the 5th of July, isn't it? Because the 4th is a Sunday. I, according to what I heard on the news, the 5th is the legal government holiday, which is Monday the 5th. So I thought, figured that's probably when you're having your barbecue and everything. Not as far as I'm no, I believe it's the fourth. So you're having it on Sunday? Okay, so when um, when you guys tell- Get, get a hold of Becky gonna... and find out. Yeah, I just wanna make sure I have that correct before I put it in the paper. <laughs> well, this time, of year, this time of year, we can start at five or six and get the game done before it's dark, you know? Or we can do it right after the the Pierce Hall race is done. Yeah, no, I was just I was just thinking whether I was just trying to make trying to make sure whether it was Sunday, which is the actual fourth, or Monday, which is the legal holiday. That's all. I wanted to make sure. Right, I, right. I understand that. I just don't, you know, I don't think that we should try doing a softball game while Pierce Hall is doing a race. Oh, of course not. No, but I thought because the race is in the morning. The same people are going to be wanting to do both. Bruce, right, we'll the, we'll if I recall correctly, we'll Bruce, the race is in the morning because we used to have the race before the parade when we had the race before. We'll uh, yeah. figure it out. We have some time. We have okay. some time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's well, Tim. thanks a lot for the Thank time. You, Tim. And, you know, Thank you. We'll keep, you'll have somebody very close to the select board keeping track of this. All right. Okay. <laughs> thanks. All right. Um, I think that that was the last.
piece I had on the agenda unless I'm missing something. Pat, you have something? Um, we did get this able waste uh, contract amendment. I don't know if you want to just say publicly that we got this. Um, it didn't, right. it didn't change the value or the budget or anything. It just uh, upgrades the service. When to, does that start? Um, when does that start? Uh, July 1st. July 1st. Uh, is, has Hancock approved that, Pat? I yes. think that's what that's saying. Yeah. yeah. They did approve it. Yep. I yeah. know that I thought they tabled it last I knew. I thought that's what Jody said. It says Hancock and Granville residents will be utilizing uh, the Rochester um, services and it will be open to everyone from that, what are the hour eight to 11 every single Saturday. Uh, yeah. Every Saturday, starting what date is it every Saturday that they're all coming? July 1. July 1. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's great. All right. We'll have a trash parade. Uh, <laughs> Jeff? Uh, just quick uh, guidance, Frank. Uh, best way to get you, me, and uh, John Gordon together? Uh, John answers a text early morning. That's what all I can tell you about John. He, he probably won't answer you during the day, but I can set that up if you give me a date with John. Okay. If, if I'll you give want. you a couple of dates. Uh, I'll look at the calendar and email you a couple of dates and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Yep. Great. I, I did happen to get the park fertilized today. Saw that. <laughs> about time. Been yep. trying. That's good. All right. Um, I think that's it. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, thank you, Jim. Business, and um, we'll see you around town. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Bye, folks. Bye. Bye.